This is my frames up checklist. If you didn't watch already my blurb about why I love checklists, go back to this video here and watch that. Anyway, I'm gonna rip into frames up checklist. Hey, quick disclaimer, this is definitely not the only way to do it. I think it's important for everyone just to be on the same page within one company. The first stage is to prepare. Double check your foundation measurements. Before you get the frames delivered, before you even think about sanding them, you should make sure your slab is nice and square, but you should also establish a square line. I like to use the biggest line of the house or the straightest line. When I did the section nobody wanted, I chose the 15 meter wall down the back, and that became my reference point for every other wall to go off. It's real tempting to rip into it and just start getting frames up and work it out as you go. I have learned the hard way, if the frames aren't quite working out, if things aren't clicking in the way you want, you need a reference point to go back to. Mark out your grid lines or your 100 mil offsets. One trick I've seen some builders do on the gram is to string a line and then spray it with paint. You obviously don't want to do this in the garage, but this gives you a permanent line that you can now use to measure off. For me, I prefer to make this 100 mils off the face of the frame. So make sure you work out if your frame's overhanging or if it is bang in line with the edge of the slab. Can be five mils overhanging, can be straight, depending on your plan, depending on your cladding system. You don't need to grid line every single frame in the house. You need to start with your square line, what's the longest wall, and then make the two ones off that square. And then you make that last external square. Once you've got the outside grid lines going, you've now got a reference point to start sanding your frames off. So your pack of frames gets delivered, stood on site, and now you start peeling them off. You'll have your framing plan, and basically it's like a giant Lego set for adults who love to build homes. Pick a starting point. Ideally, your starting point on your plan will relate to the pack of frames. You don't wanna be using the frame that's all the way at the bottom and peeling everything off and moving it. You don't wanna be double handing your frames. So ideally, you look at your stack of frames and you look at where the top layer of framing is going, and you start moving that around and you work your way around the build methodically, standing all your frames. Yo, if you're enjoying these checklist videos and you want a copy for your business or your site, head to nzbuilder.co.nz slash checklist to find out more information. I would then go around and tack all the joins and I would do this just with one nail. Basically, you just want it to get all stood. Again, it's real tempting to rush in and fix things down, but you want to stand it all up, make sure it's all working, make sure that measurements are right, then you can move on to the next stage. From here, I would go and straighten all of your bottom plates. Again, starting with the longest external wall. And then I would either use your grid lines or dodge blocks is when you get three blocks of the exact same thickness. You put one at either end and you string the line across really, really tight. So if you've got a 25 mil block at this end, a 25 mil block at this end, and then a 25 mil block, as you go along each two or three meter increment, you pull your bottom plate in or out until at that point it's touching the line. Basically, you want your string line that you're using as a reference point. You don't want it to be tight up to your frames because if your frames are bulging, it's gonna push the line. So if the line's here and there's a bulge in the frame, you can establish that as you go along and you use your dodge block. Real hard to explain here in the studio, but real easy to explain on site. And the next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and click subscribe and help us build up this channel. So you've got your string line up or you've been using your grid lines. You've now got your longest external wall straight. You would then refer back to your square line that you established. You would now straighten up the walls at right angles to that. You would also use Pythagoras 3, 4, 5 to make sure that your frames are square off that first external wall that you straightened. You would now work your way around the entire perimeter of the building. Mm -hmm. 
Once you've straightened that first external wall, you would shoot that down, one concrete nail every meter. Remember to avoid blowouts out the side of the slab and also be aware of where your bracing tie downs are going. Now that your perimeter is straight and shot down, you can work on using those perimeter walls to line up all your interior walls. You would use the bottom plates from the perimeter to get parallel measurements for all your internal walls. Basically, work your way around methodically, make sure everything is parallel, is to the measurements on the plan, and shoot it down as you go. Now you can work on clamping your corners. Again, start with your longest external wall, start with that first corner. You can work on clamping it top to bottom, tighten it up, nail it off, except for the top plate, because if you need to manipulate it, you can still use the top plate to do this. And get your level, make sure it's accurate, make sure you've double checked that it's working. If you're using a 1200 level, you need to get a straight edge that is the same height as your studs, or get your full length level, make sure it's calibrated, make sure it's working properly, and then plumb those corners. Brace them up as you go straight away. Work your way around and plumb all the external corners. If you need to use a saber saw, cut the nails out, manipulate the top plates to either expand it or contract it. Ideally, you shouldn't have to do this too much. You now have all the external corners of your building locked in place. You would then work around and wherever you have an internal frame meeting an external frame, plumb off those. Basically, for those who don't know, plumb means straight up and down. You make the frame perfectly vertical at all of your corners and then all of your internal junctions. An internal junction is where an internal wall meets an external wall. This corner here, you would make sure that this wall is plumb. You would do that by shooting a brace to the internal wall. You'd then take your string lines and your dodge blocks from your bottom plates and you would put them on your top plates. Again, starting with your longest internal wall. See how you're always coming back to that first wall that you used. You kind of do a lap of the building for your measurements. Do a lap of the building for your bottom plates. Do a lap of the building for straightening the corners. Now we're on top plates. Start again at that first corner, at that longest wall. String line up, dodge block either end. Work your way along. Wherever a frame is like four meters or six meters, you might want to consider putting a brace in the middle to keep the top plate nice and straight while you're doing your trusses. So you know when you walk around a building site and you see all these pieces of random timber going on angles, those are braces. Those are all just temporarily holding the top of the frames in place before we put the roof trusses on. They'll stick around until we put the roof trusses in. We actually like to keep them on for as long as the cladding phase is possible and take them off when we start moving inside. So you've plumbed all your internal corners, you've straightened all your outside top plates, you can now move on to straighten your inside top plates. Now you get to go around the top and make sure you nail plate off all of your joints. Ideally the pre-nailer would have supplied a box with all the fixings, otherwise go to your local merchant, hopefully an ITM, get the nail plate fixings from them, double check all of your fixings as per the bracing plan, have you allowed for all of the GS1s, have you allowed for all the BLs, and Double check, do you need stud straps, lintel straps? This is your last thing to do. Guess what? You have done your frames. If you're liking this checklist video and you love this type of content, go ahead, click subscribe. Biggest way to support us. Look out for our next checklist, roof trusses. Yo, if you're enjoying these checklist videos and you want a copy for your business or your site, head to nzbuilder.co.nz slash checklist to find out more information.